So guys, I'll be talking about organization of test data in terms of your tables and graphs. Now, please be mindful that the organization of your data is one of our responsibilities as teacher. First of all, to analyze what is happening to our student. And uh, second of all, and an honest part of it is that it has it is being required to us by our respective institutions. No? But I hope that you will not just be doing it for the purpose of requirement because if you have noticed there are for example there are elementary schools or high schools which would post their tables and graph of the results once there is an accreditation or once there is an upcoming visitor so please do not make it as a practice anytime that you will just have a visitor but please make it a consistent practice throughout the year so that your students will be able to see their performance also in terms of these tables and graphs that we will be talking about now the first term here that we need to know is the term raw score. So, pag sinabi nating raw score, it means that the score of the child itself, the score of the pupil himself when you took the exam. For example, when you took your prelim exams, somebody got a score of 65, another one got a score of 74, another one got a score of 86. Those are raw scores. Okay? Pag sinabing raw score, ibig sabihin yung score mismo ng estudyante. So it is said to be easy to get because these are the scores obtained from administering a test, okay, a questionnaire, or any inventory rating scale to measure the knowledge, skills, or attributes of interest. Okay? Kaya daw madali kasi um, by the time that you check the exam, the raw scores will already be there. Now, so, for example, if you would look at this, na, if you would look at this, this is our example of raw scores. I made here an example of 15 pupils, and then you have the, um, the scores there in a 15-item quiz that we had, for example. By the way, just, uh, just for me to share, these names were automatically generated from um, the internet. No? There's a website that automatically generates names. So later on, for example, if you would want to generate names just for a purpose of example, you can use this one. Because as a teacher, as an educator, I could not share to you the actual names of my students along with their actual scores or else that will be the breach. That will be a breach of privacy for the part of my students. Okay. Now, the next thing is the frequency distribution table. Pag sinabi natin class na frequency distribution table, perhaps the easiest way for me to say about or to talk about this is to say it's tally. Okay? Your frequency distribution table is the tally of your scores. So it is the listing of scores that can be ascending or descending that reflects the tallying of scores wherein the data can be grouped or ungrouped. Okay? The data can be grouped or un ungrouped. Okay? So if you would look at this, if you would look at this, this is an example of a frequency distribution table of test scores. So kung nakikita nyo kanina, this is the raw data. Kaya nakikita natin ano yung score ni student A, ano yung score ni student B, ano yung score ni student C. When we are posting the data, for example, in the bulletin boards, we don't actually post the data one by one. Kaya hindi naman natin sinasabi na, uy, yung score ni Angel, 12. Yung score ni Isis, 13. Yung score ni Catherine, 11. Okay? So kadalasan, we present the group data. And one example of that is this frequency distribution table. So class, makikita nyo sa frequency distribution table, sabi natin kanina, it's tallying of scores. So since it is tallying of scores, we are able to see na, uy, there are two students, okay? There are two students who scored 8. There are three students who scored 10. There are, there is one student who scored 14 and one student got the perfect score. And then you have your percentage. Now, let us be mindful as to how to compute the percentage. Na? So class, for the percentage, please remember that, okay? Sorry, these are listing pala of 20 students na? because our total is 20. Now, if you would look at the percentage, how do we solve for it? So class, for the percentage, you are simply solving your percentage by having the frequency divided by the total times 100. So in this case, for example, 2. So the percentage is equal to 2 divided by 20 times 100. That gives us your 10% here. Okay? That gives us your 10%. Now, when we talk about your cumulative percent, 
perhaps when you are studying statistics, you have less than CF and greater than CF. No? But for the purpose of this percentage table or for this frequency distribution table, let's just talk about the cumulative percent. So class from here, you are able to see that 10%. Pagkatapos pa paano ko nakuha yung 20, it's 10 plus 10. Okay? I'm so sorry. Let me see if uh, I'm moving my mouse. Uh, so class, how did how did we come up with the 20 here? So 10% plus 10% will be equal to 20. Pagkatapos 20% plus 15% is equal to 35%. 35% plus 15% is equal to 50%. Sir, para sa ano po, bakit tayo nagka-cumulative percent? Now class, if I would look at this for example, no? for example, I would look at the value of 80%. From here, I can conclude that 80% of my students scored 12 and below. Okay, again, 80% of my students scored 12 and below. And from that, I will be able to say that 20% of my students scored above 12. Okay, the remaining 20% of my students scored above 12. Okay, I hope that you're getting. Are you getting what I mean? Can I get some reactions there? Can you give me a heart react or maybe a like reaction if you're getting what I mean? Okay, okay, sige. So class, this one is um, this one is telling us that, okay, these are the performance of your students or this is how we are doing it. No? This is how they are performing in your class. Now, since we are already in the era of using your computers, please be mindful that this counting is not actually done manually. Okay? One loophole kasi that I have seen in education is that most of the teachers are having hard time in doing their work manually. So please be mindful that we already have softwares that are able to help us to do our work and to make our work easy. Okay? So if I may share to you, and I would also want you to remember this, I don't expect you to master this right away if you're not familiar with it, but I would want you to practice the use of it, okay? So class, one thing that we have in your Excel is what we refer to as your count if, okay? One thing that we have in Excel is what we refer to as your count if. So ano pong ibig sabihin ng count if? Class, your count if would count how many entries in this column is eight. How many entries in this column is 9, 10, 11, and so on? Okay? That feature class is shown. Sorry, I'll let me delete those. Class, that feature is this, is equal to count if. That will be your formula. The range class will be this one. And then don't forget to place the dollar signs there. What's the purpose of your dollar sign? The dollar sign class will allow the data to stay as is. It will not move. Okay, the data will be as is. It will not move even though if you will drag this down. Okay, then comma, the criteria is this one. Okay, and then from that, we'll be able to know that, okay, dalawa pala yung score na 8. Pagkatapos, if I will drag this down, I will be able to see that tatlo yung may score na 10. Okay, anin yung may score na 12. Okay, now, with that class, we are having automation already with the reporting of those scores. Bakit po kasi, sinasabi ko ito, ano? the usual reason kasi why the teacher is not doing this because they will say, it's time-consuming. Nako, gagawa pa ako ng exam, tapos gagawa pa ako ng report, gagawa pa ako ng graph, gagawa pa ako ng table. So class, it's not actually time-consuming if you will make use of the technology available to us. Okay, and you are actually encouraged to use the technology available to us. Now, for example, I would want to know the total number of my students here. I can just click Alt equal. Okay, I'm clicking on my keyboard, the Alt, and then equal. Okay, that's 20. Or another alternative is for you to type is equal to sum, and then you highlight all those numbers that you would want to add. Okay, that will be 20. Now, let's go toward percentage. Now, for your percentage naman, guys, that will be equal to the value of this one divided by 20. Okay? Now, class, ha? dapat may nilagay pa akong dollar sign. Pero bibigyan ko kayo ng example na walang dollar sign. Okay? Class, pag walang dollar sign, yung nangyayari is that hindi na ito nakabase sa 20. Pero kung makikita nyo this one, okay, it's already on the blank 
row here or the blank cell here. Kasi hindi ko nalagyan ng dollar sign. But look at this for example. If I would place dollar signs here, plus the dollar signs could be pressed or could be indicated by function F4. Okay? Function F4. Then enter. Once I will be dragging that down, okay, the divisor would stay on 20 because I placed the dollar sign there. Okay? Plus, somehow, are you getting what I mean? Are you getting what I mean on this? Can I get a heart react or a like reaction for that? Sige na. I would want to see your reactions muna. Okay? Yes? Are you getting the, what I mean? I don't expect you to demonstrate it during our examinations or classes. But I, what I would want is that you're understanding the purpose of technology. Okay? And then plus for the cumulative percent, for the cumulative percent, it's equal to 10 for that one. Then it's equal to 10 plus this one. And then you just drag it down. Okay? That would already give you the value of cumulative percent. Okay? So that's one way, class, dear teachers of the future, for you to do not. That's one way for us to represent or that's one way for us to compute for the data that are available for us. Okay? So, sir, baka sa exam natin, you, will you be asking us to do an Excel file? No, but I will be asking you to interpret tables that I will be giving to you. Okay? Now, for this one class, I hope that you will be able to explore this. This is not a technology in teaching class. This is assessment. I'm just giving you an overview that, okay, it can be done. Okay? But please practice now. For example, this one class is actually a moving, what do you call that? It's a moving bar graph, which I actually learned from, which I actually learned from TikTok. No? I saw this in TikTok and then I tried to copy the formula. So class, this is the formula that we are using. And then just be mindful that uh, you need to change the font to play bill. Okay, the font class must be changed to play bill. So it would appear like in the way, for example, pag tataas yung percentage nito, automatically mag-a-adjust siya. So anong nakita kong advantage dyan? Ako bilang teacher, at least I will be able to see, uy, bakit ang dami ng students ko na 8 lang yung score? That's alarming. Okay? Or for example, I would look at this, wow, a lot of my students got perfect scores. However, there are really few students pa na medyo mababa yung score na kailangan kong aksyonan. Okay? Basically, class, parang straight line lang yan na inulit-ulit, no? Parang ito yung kalalabasan kapag dollar sign yung nilagay natin dyan. Okay? Uulitin niya lang yung dollar sign. Okay? So it's just one, maybe we can say life hacks that they are sharing to us. So I actually discovered that in TikTok. Okay? Now, going forward. So, now, let's talk about the frequency distribution tables for group data. Let's talk about the frequency distribution tables for group data. As you can see on my screen, okay? So class ito, frequency distribution table ito class, but it makes use of the raw data. Okay, nakikita po natin 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But another way for us to present it is frequency distribution table of group data. So in this case class, this is group data already. Okay, bakit po siya group? Now, i-compare natin. Yung nakalista po dito, if you would notice, what is being listed here are the raw scores. Now, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pagpunta natin doon sa kabila, on the next example that I have, you will be able to notice that it's already the class interval that is being listed. So as you can see, class interval of 1 to 5, then you have class interval of 6 to 10, then class interval of 11 to 15. Okay? Now, from that class, you will be able to notice na, okay, yung mga students natin, Yung frequency ng nanaka-score ng 1 to 5, 0. Kaya ibig sabihin walang nanaka-score ng 1 to 5. For the 6 to 10, there are 7 students who scored 7 to 10. And there are 13 students who scored um, 11 to 15. And then from that, you have your cumulative frequency and then you also have your cumulative percentage. Plus, pag sinabi natin cumulative frequency, it's just like the example that I've given you on the previous slide. Pero yung previous natin is cumulative percentage. Kaya yung ina-add po natin sa cumulative frequency is the frequency. So for example, 0, 
0 plus 7 is 7, 7 plus 13 is 20. And then cumulative percentage as discussed on the previous slide. Now, if I would look at the term midpoint, baka nagtataka, sir, ano yung midpoint? Plus mid value lang ng 1 to 5. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 is in the middle. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 8 is in the middle. 11 to 15, 13 is in the middle. Okay? Kadalasan, the midpoint is not actually included in the presentation. But it is there for statistical purposes only. Okay? Yung kadalasan po nating pinapakita is class interval, frequency, at saka percentage. Okay? So again, class, this is for group data. Now, okay, so that's it for some um, organization of data. Allow me to share to you different kinds of graphs so that you will be able also to um, apply this in the future. Okay, any questions so far? Pag may tanong, pwede po kayong mag-chat. So let's talk about data presentation. Plus, in data presentation, you have a lot of data or you have a lot of charts that can be used in presenting your data. One good example could be your bar graph. So class, sorry, the example that I have here is actually, strictly speaking, a column graph. No? Strictly speaking, column graph po ito. Okay? Now, let's differentiate. Class, when we talk about the bar graph, the bar graph is said to be a horizontal chart. Okay? It is referred to as horizontal chart. And when we say horizontal, this is how I would usually tell my students, letter H, as in horizontal, is written like this. Meaning plus the horizontal graph looks like this one, but a vertical graph or a column graph looks like this one. Okay? So pardon my example on the screen. The one plus shown on the screen is actually strictly a column graph. Okay? This one is a column graph. Why am I saying naman the phrase strictly or why I'm saying the word strictly? Because in other statistic books, no, they would just say bar graph or column graph. But there are statistics book, statistics book that would differentiate between the bar and the column. But anyway, so class, when we talk about bar, it's horizontal. When we talk about column, it's vertical. So your bar graph class is best for frequencies and then it can be arranged from highest to lowest for that matter. In the school class, in the school system, I have usually seen the use of bar graph when we are reporting, for example, the weight of the children. And then other than that class, we are using, for example, it on the reading, um, what do you call this, in assessing the reading capability of the children. Okay? Diyan po natin nakikita na, ay, okay, last month yung reading capacity niya hanggang dito. Pero pagka next month, nag-move na siya. Okay? So that's one purpose of your bar graph. Now, plus, your bar graph is also wise to compare 10 items or more. So in our case, for example, if there are 10 scores or more, and then categories or labels are long. So that's one way also for us to compare. Now, what's the best practices on using your bar graph? Plus, if you are using your bar graph, you try to focus on one color for the bar chart. Okay? Now, if you would really want to use accent colors, class, Accent colors are only ideal. Okay, accent colors plus are ideal to highlight. So, for example, if you would want to highlight your exemplary students, if you would want to highlight your students with exemplary performance, you can do that by using the accent color in the bar graph. Pero hindi pwede, for example, na halimbawa may limang student ka, yung color kay Robert, red, pagkatapos yung color kay Anna, orange, yung color naman doon kay John, green. Hindi kailangan. Okay? How about, sir, if gusto kong i-differentiate yung performance ng lalaki at saka babae? You need to be careful. Okay? Now, we are not already in the times of differentiating the man and the woman. Okay? Take note that we are very uh, very um, aware right now of um, gender sensitivity issues. So, iwasan na yung mga iba't ibang color. No? Kasi um, we are just placing the lines or delineation between a man and a woman. Okay? So bars class are expected to be wider. The labels class are expected to be written horizontally. And then class, you can arrange the categories either alphabetically or by value. So kung nakikita nyo dito, this one is arranged by value. Okay? Si Mint kasi yung mataas, Rocky Road, susunod. I think these are flavors of ice cream. No? Okay? Now, this one is actually from the research of my student. I am sharing this with the citation there below. So class, you can see here the knowledge about earthquake management. 
So you can see that majority of the respondents have average knowledge. Okay, whereas about 33% or one third of them have high knowledge and then a little percent of 5.8 has low knowledge about earthquake management. So as you can see in the bar graph, you're able to see that mm, madali, average knowledge yung kalamihan. Okay? May mga high knowledge naman pero almost one third lang. If you would look at this also class, dapat proportionate siya. No? Paano po natin sinasabing proportionate? Kung makikita nyo po, nang dyan malapit yung 58.6% because your viewer would have a vision that, okay, okay, the one that I highlighted in red may be commensurate already to 100%. Okay? So kung nakikita nyo, proportionate siya. Okay? Hindi pwede na gawa-gawa mo lang kung gano'ng kahaba yung mga boxes natin. Okay? Now, this one is also on earthquake preparedness. As you can see, most of the students perceive themselves to be highly prepared when it comes to earthquake preparedness. Okay? So these are also examples of how you can present the data that are available for your classes. So for example, gusto mong ipakita kung ano yung average score ng students mo. Okay? Gusto mong ipakita kung ano yung average score nila or ano yung performance nila during their examination in your um, prelim or midterm examinations. Okay? So you will be able to see that here. Now, another thing is, this one is still a bar graph, but I would like to point out this example here below. Somehow, this is a bar graph that makes use of creativity. Now, so this is a bar graph that makes use of creativity. So if you can notice, class, there are 10 icons there of individual people. So my 10 icons po tayo dyan. Um, after niyan class, no, naka-highlight yung apat. So, um, yung apat na yan class, it means that about 40%, about 40% of the respondents forgets to give the medication to their children. Dito naman class, 30% stop the medication when the child is feeling worse. Another 30% don't continue if the child is already feeling better. Okay, so may mga ganun, no? may mga ganun tayong mga way to present. So, I'm just encouraging you that later on when you are doing it on your work, be creative also on how will you be presenting. Okay? Now, the next type of chart is what we refer to as your column chart. Gaya ng sabi ko kanina, when I say column, okay, it's vertical. Okay, it's vertical. Ibig sabihin, patayo po yung chart. Okay? The same po ang purpose nito sa bar graph natin. Okay? So, these are just examples. No? So, as you can see here, class, in the examples, no? malalaman natin na maraming estudyante na high knowledge pero highly prepared sila. Okay? Maraming student na average knowledge pero highly prepared pa rin. So, we use this type of chart when we would want to compare two types of data. Okay? Two types of data yung kinocompare dito. So, class, in this case, the knowledge and preparedness. Okay? Now, these are examples of your column chart and your bar graph. So this is from the study that I conducted. So this is a study among children with epilepsy. Okay? So I don't know if when will you be taking your special ed subjects, um, but we do not refer to them anymore as epileptics. We refer to them as children with epilepsy. So among your children with epilepsy, you can notice that about 22% of them are not schooling at all. 24% stop and then 15% are on and off, and only 40% are on school na, on the regular basis. So, yun. So, this bar graph is used to demonstrate, to demonstrate if ano yung frequencies dyan. Pagkatapos, class, nakikita nyo, ano po yung red? No? Yung red pro are actionable items. Okay? The red here, class, would signify actionable items when it comes to the recommendation of my research. Okay? Now, line chart. Pag sinabi naman nating line chart class, it is used to plot continuous data across a certain period of time. In fact, your line chart is best used if you would want to compare data over the years. Halimbawa, gusto mong makita yung average reading performance from the time you started teaching going towards after 10 years. Plus, the best way for you to present it is using your line chart. No? Makikita po natin na, uy, noong 2017, mataas yung performance. Bakit noong 2018 bumaba? Ay nag-online class, mas talo pang bumaba noong 2021. Okay? So something like that. So class, your line chart is best to detect data changes across time. 
Okay? Again, class, it's best to detect data changes across time. Okay? Now, so class, what, when to use your line chart? No? So it will compare and present lots of data at once. It's to show trends also and progress over time. And then other than that, class, to highlight deceleration, ibig sabihin yung pagbaba ng speed or pagbaba class ng performance, and then to present a forecast. Ibig sabihin, you would want to say that, okay, in the next year, I would like to predict that the data will be like this. Okay, so class, it is your line chart which will be able to present that. Okay? Now, the next one here is the best practices for your line chart. So you are encouraged to use solid lines. Yung dotted at saka yung dashed lines are distracting. You need to label the lines directly and avoid using legends. Okay? Mahirap po kasi, especially kapag black and white to later on, mahirap po intindihin. And then avoid more than four lines. Pag more than four lines po siya, it will be distracting already to your audience. Okay? Then you have your scatter plot. One important thing that you need to remember for scatter plot is this. Scatter plot relationship. Okay? Scatter plot class is used to show relationships. Okay? Now, if you would look at the example here, class, um, this is about satisfaction of patients in terms of time. So, ito po yung time kung saan yung doctor nakita yung patient. Tapos, ito po yung satisfaction. Okay? Ito po yung satisfaction nila. Okay? So, makikita po natin that you will be able to see na, ah, okay, kapag nakita po siya ng, ah, wait lang. So, class, kapag matagal siya, no? Kapag matagal siyang tiningnan ng doktor, ibig sabihin, when the doctor gives enough time to the patients, when the doctor gives ample time to the patients, the patients tend to be satisfied. Okay? Yan po yung ibig sabihin ng chart na to. Okay? For example, makikita po natin dito, no? Okay? For example, this part here. You will be able to see that, okay, kinausap siya ng doktor for 20 minutes. Okay? 20 minutes siyang kinausap ng doktor. The satisfaction score that she gave is 5. Ibig sabihin, happy siya because the doctor was able to give time to him or her okay, towards the case that she is concerned of. So class, for this time, okay, just remember that your scatter plot, okay, your scatter plot is intended to show relationships. Okay? So class, yung independent variable is usually nasa x-axis. Yung dependent variable is on the y-axis. Okay? Kind of talk, take note of that. The independent variable is in the x-axis. The dependent variable class could be found in the y-axis. Okay? That's for your scatter plot. So again, it is used to show relationship between two variables. And if you have two variables that would complement each other. Now, plus you have your pie chart. When you talk about your pie chart, your pie chart would be showing percentages. And the total sum of all pies should be equal to 100%. So, class, maganda lang yung pie chart. No? Maganda yung pie chart, class. Kapag you would want to illustrate the part to whole from business to classroom chart and graph, and to identify the smallest and the largest items within the data set and to compare between multiple data points in the pie chart. Plus, yung pie chart po natin is wise to be limited for three to five categories only. Okay? Kung nakikita nyo sa example natin in this slide, you will be able to see that there are five categories only. Plus, kapag mga 10 categories na mag-isip-isip po tayo, hindi po pie chart yung best to be used. Okay? You might go back to your bar graph or column graph for that matter. Okay? Then you need to double check that the values indicated there would equal to 100%. And then make your most important slice stand out with color. You can use shades of that specific color to highlight the specific slices. Okay? So class, for example, in this one, there are only two categories. So makikita talaga na ay okay, mas marami yung good earthquake management kaysa sa poor earthquake management. Okay? So those are no, those are the different type of graphs that you can use when you would want to present the data about the performance of your student. Now, this slide, no, this slide um is just a reminder that softwares such as Microsoft Excel actually exist to help us in the workload that we are doing. 
Okay, so I hope later on that once you already have your work as educators, you will be able to use also these type of softwares so that you will be able to have efficient work and focus also on important tasks that needs to be done.